What I have here is our old family iMac from late 2013. Now this is dusty right now because this has been in the storage for quite some time. The story goes is that at some point this computer just wasn't used. We had a lot of power outages and this was plugged in. Eventually the hard drive went bad for some reason and I had to presume it was because of the thunderstorms and whatnot over the summer and it caused a lot of power outage. I guess somehow it caught into the hard drive. Not too long ago, probably around like two to three years ago, I upgraded this from the one terabyte 5400 rpm drive to a 256 ssd you could see i replaced it because there's a massive crack that runs across the screen right here this model of the imac is very thin on the taper edges so the only way to get into the motherboard and the hard drive and whatnot is to really pry that display out the issue with the display is that even today even 2024 this display still costs around a hundred dollars and this computer this whole thing would probably run you around 150 120 something like that because this is the base model with the 8 gigs and i5 so you might as well just leave that crack display and leave it running because everything is fine in here except for that crack display which i covered it with duct tape other than that this computer should start up <laughs> i finally finished cleaning the iMac i'm gonna be repurposing this iMac for <laughs> i got nervous there i thought it wouldn't start up i'm trying to repurpose this computer for my computer business downstairs this is just gonna be for basic ebay selling and whatnot that would be a lot useful and i'm gonna have to log into this i might have forgot what password i'm putting this on so what we have here is a late 2013 with a quad core i5 8 gigs of ram and the gt 750m Look what I just found. I found my new 27 inch 5K iMac right here. That was also one of the reasons why I stopped using this was because the screen was just way too small and I decided 27 inch iMac would be a good deal, especially the one I bought, which had 32 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of SSD after I upgraded it. Okay, so here's my plan. I don't think I can find or locate open core legacy patch on this computer. I'm presuming it's a very old version of it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and boot to a Mac OS Sierra with open core legacy that's updated and we can update it to Sonoma from there. All right, we have fully booted up to Sierra. Now I just need to go to Distrutility. Get away, Xfinity, I don't need you. All we have to do is just erase this whole thing. Erase the internal hard drive. Goner all the photos. I'm sure I've backed them up somewhere. I might regret that option later, but let's go ahead and open Open Core Legacy. I'm looking forward to this one. iMac 14,3. All right, let's build and install. The G2750M on this computer is still perfectly fine. The fact that this is only a 1920 by 1080 display means that it's not really pushing a lot of pixels, unlike the 4K, which came around like 2014, 2015. Fun fact, the next year, the 2014 models of iMac downgraded power-wise. I believe the base version of a 21 inch back then was a dual core. So the fact that this is a quad core i5 is still perfectly usable. You know, I don't know why Apple did that. They also did that for the Mac mini from a quad core to a dual core. I agree. And yep, there you go. This is gonna take some time. I've successfully installed Sonoma. All we have to do now is just do the setup. All right, so I'm installing a lot of benchmark apps right here just to double check everything is working properly. So installing Google Chrome as well as Max fan control here. So that way we can check if the fan is spinning or if the computer is running too hot or something like that. I know for the fact that I have not replaced this thermal paste ever. And there's a very good reason for that. Changing the thermal paste on this computer is an absolute pain in the ass. Let's get into benchmarking. Blackmagic disk is first and that is not good what's going on here why is this slow this is running an ssd i don't know why it's only going 95 100 megabits per second on the right see the read speed is about 390 which is about right but that shouldn't be the case that is weird yeah let's go ahead and do some speed tests so let's open safari here and you can see it loads pretty quick messages look at that it's not that bad you know, a lot of these apps don't really take that long to load on this computer. If you go to system preferences or system settings, you can see it takes a bit the first time, but once you open it and close it again, it's almost instantaneous right there. Anything like the calendar, anything low intensive applications doesn't really cause you any problems. And look at that, we're back to what it's supposed to be. 420 megabits per second and 430 on the read. There you go. That's what we like. Let's move on to Cinebench. That is some weird graphics artifacting right there. And let's go ahead and start with multi-core. M1 Ultra is 1625. A base model M1 is 509. And I know this is only a two core. Two core? It's a four core. 
All right, so Cinebench has finally completed and I'm actually generally surprised how this scored around 186. Now that is not really impressive at all. The fact that this is not too far off from a 2012 MacBook underbody with four cores and eight threads is surprising. This i5-4570S is really only a four core CPU without any hyper threading. Because this is a desktop CPU, that definitely makes a big difference. They are still about four or five, six times slower than a M1 chip, which is the first generation of Apple Silicon. Let's go ahead and move on to Geekbench 6 and see what we get on the CPU as well as the GPU. Single core we got 1135 and multi core 3239. So we're right around a MacBook Pro 13 inch quad core mid 2018 and we're also right around a regular Mac 27 from 2013. But this one is from the i7 actually. Now a regular iMac 27 inch late 2013 would be scoring around 1050. So I guess that extra bit of performance gain is from the SSD. All right, moving on to multi-core, we got 3239, 3239. We have to scroll all the way down here. Uh, it looks like we're about a Mac Pro Mint 2012 with 12 cores. That's interesting. This one scored a 3189. Obviously we scored 3239, so we're a bit higher than that. We're right around a late 2015 27 inch iMac. Hang on a second, that's my iMac. What's going on here? Why are we scoring a lot higher than we anticipated? I'm not really sure. Originally we would have scored 2926, but again, I guess that extra bit of performance and that SSD is really helping us here. We have scored 4478 for the OpenCL on the GT750. So 4478 is all the way down here as you'd expect it to be. Right under Force GT 755M, and some degraded graphics is even faster than this, which is surprising, or equally as fast. You can see a HD 630 is not even that far off from this, which is kind of funny. I generally don't understand why Apple would discontinue this with Catalina. This computer is perfectly suitable to run even Sonoma, which is surprising, but they're trying to really do their best to move on to Apple Silicon chips, which is really unfortunate for the Intel computers like this one. Despite this being almost 10 years old or almost a decade old, it is still perfectly usable even today. And yes, if you have a 5400 RPM drive on this iMac, it will definitely show its age. If you have the actual computer like this with an upgraded SSD, you're gonna be fine for a good while. And if you're able to upgrade that RAM, or that CPU, it's definitely gonna be playing fast. What is going on everybody? My name is Rose here and what I have for you And you can see how well it just plays. And that speaker is such a good speaker. The set of speakers this thing has is better than a lot of the even Windows computers nowadays. So let's take it to 4K and see what happens there. Look at that, 4K is playing on it. Completely forgot after 2015. This is playing well, this is streaming 4K right now and it's playing perfectly fine as long as you have a good internet. Speaking of playing video games on this, there's really no reason for you to play anything intensive than Minecraft. We actually used to play this exact iMac with Minecraft and it's always been smooth sailing. This is Run 3 which is not really intensive at all but you can see how it's relatively smooth. It's about 60 FPS and this is a website or web base. A little bit of context, we used to play this game back in 2013-2012 so right around this exact iMac era and you can see how smooth it is. In conclusion, and I think this computer is still perfectly usable in 2024 and even onwards. I think the limiting factor of this is just the upgradability side of things on this computer. As you can see, look how thin that is on the taper edges. You really need to be careful trying to pry this out, unlike me, in order to access the motherboard and upgrade the RAM, SSD, or hard drive in general replacement. This is going to be on the trickier side of things when it comes to that. Normally, these computers used to be very easy to upgrade. The RAM was located at the back, so back in the day, it would be just located under here. And even a 27-inch model of this computer have a easy access RAM, so I don't really know why Apple removed the option to upgrade on a 21-inch lower model iMacs. It's just stupid. But other than that, this computer is still perfectly usable, and I think this will definitely suffice for my business. eBay's and printing, and all these basic tasks for my business, I think this computer is perfect. And the fact that it's running Sonoma now, I think this should be good for a couple of years to come. I think that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Honestly, I'm telling you guys, if you guys can snag a good deal on these computers and know how to upgrade without breaking it like I did, 
I think you should be good for a good while. Don't forget, there's a lot of options for these iMacs. I mean, just a year or two later, you get the 4K option for the 21 inch or the 5K option for the 27 inch, which I personally have and even today is still one of the best displays you'll ever see in your whole entire life. I think that's gonna do it. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.